Hey everybody, welcome back. So the concrete's set, piers are set, now it's time to start framing. So, let's go check it out. So as you can see behind me here, we got all the piers set. Uh, we got the plans. Next thing we gotta do is set all the beams as the plans dictate. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Did I mention we were off grid here? So I wanted to take a quick minute and show you how I cut uh, beams or 4x4s. I am using the chop saw for the 4x4s just because it can cut that. But I went kind of cheap and didn't go for the sliding. So it won't cut 4x6s. But I'll show you how I cut them with a uh, skill saw. And I usually don't get um, that jagged edge on them. So cutting 12 foot 9. So the way I go about it is I will mark three sides at least. I usually just end up marking all four. And then the trick that I do is <clears throat> when I'm cutting it, I'll cut one side all the way through and then I'll roll the beam which keep it in frame, I'll move it up a little bit. And then I'll roll the beam, keeping the blade in there, keep cutting, and then do that. So let's go ahead and see how it comes out. Not my best work, but it's better than usual. <laughs> There's a little bit of a edge there, but so that's that, back to work. So I just wanted to take a minute and talk about the hardware or brackets that I'm using on this project. Uh, this is a known as a post cap. 
this is a post and this is the cap that holds the beam up. This is known as a PC4Z, uh, post cap four. And then the Z is a special coating that they put on these brackets that's designed to go up against pressure treated lumber. Basically, it just grabs the four x four here, as you can see, and then it holds the beam, any four by beam, it could be four by six, four by eight, um, four by 10, stuff like that. So this is capable of doing any four by sized material. Uh, the way that I attach these is using a screw just to get them set and, and started. It's a lot easier than trying to pound a, uh, a Tico nail in there right away. Uh, and then what I'll do once I get everything up, I'll come through and set Tico's because these screws, these screws are pretty expensive. Get everything going and started with a screw and then I'll come back and, and finish it with Tico's. I also am using joist hangers, but we'll talk about those once we get to that point. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the brackets that I'm using on this project. Alrighty, so as you can tell from behind me there, I got the girders up. Uh, this is a little different than a typical deck structure because usually you would put joists on top of the girders but for some reason and i did get these off of pacific yurts uh, com or yurts.com pacific yurts.com is the company what's different about this structure is i'm going to put blocking in between the the beams or the girders here and that's what's going to create my blocking for the plywood to sit on we are using inch and an eighth plywood so Next up, let's get some blocking going on. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a string line here, and this has been my guide for the center of this structure the whole way through. So just make sure this line is still good. I wanna have a my joist land on the center and then go four feet out from that on either side. So let's get going. Alrighty, so as promised, let's talk about uh, joist hangers. This one here is a LUS26Z. Uh, not really sure what the word letters mean, but uh, it's a joist hanger, um, 26, two by six. And uh, Z means it's designed to go up against uh, pressure treated lumber. Uh, See, so I got one up here. Um, in this setup, I'm mounting it between the beams here that's what it does it just kind of holds the joist up this would be considered uh, a joist in this situation the way that I'm mounting it um, when you're mounting again I do the screws into the when I initially set it that just makes it a lot easier instead of trying to pound a nail in there and then I'll come around so I don't use up a lot of screws because again they're expensive and I'll finish it off with um, 
Ticos or small joist nails or uh, hanger nails. So these hangers are designed to be what's called double shear nailing. So when you go in through the side at an angle here, you use a 16 penny nail. You want to use Galvi in pressure treated and it goes through the joist and into the um, beam. So yeah, that's that. Let's get back to work.